airline tickets, AirPods, massage therapy. Those are just some of the gifts one woman gave to her spiritual caregiver before passing away. But the woman's nephew later found out his aunt also left that caregiver a half million dollars in her will. He's claiming it's a case of elder financial abuse. Lauren Victory looks into the dispute that's now headed for court. She loved people, she loved kids, she loved teaching. She Ed Schwitzky is reliving fond memories of his late aunt, Hannah Schwitzky Lord. Because my aunt was a teacher, she traveled during the summers and she'd call my parents and say, can Eddie go with me to the World's Fair or to California or to wherever it was. Ed thought he knew what was going on in his aunt's life. Gosh, I talked to my aunt every day. But there was something she wasn't telling him. Should I have known? Could I have done something? Why she left a half million dollars to her spiritual caregiver, Elizabeth Butler Jameson, a former priest at St. Simon's Church in Arlington Heights. Let's backtrack. <laughs> In 2016, Hannah's husband was receiving end-of-life spiritual care from Elizabeth. After he passed away, Elizabeth and Hannah grew closer. Every conversation became about Elizabeth. And as their relationship developed, Hannah gave Elizabeth more and more gifts. From massages and AirPods to airline tickets. And seven months before she passed away, Hannah revised her will to leave Elizabeth a substantial sum. Almost $500,000. A change Hannah never told Ed about, even though he was the executor of her will. All of this development last fall was, was terribly surprising and disturbing. After Ed found out about the trust and the gifts, he submitted a Title IV complaint with the Episcopal Diocese. The diocese said Elizabeth shouldn't have accepted the gifts, but because she was retired when she received almost all of them, it was impossible to suspend her, and the diocese ultimately dismissed the investigation. I thought, how did this happen? The bishop did reach out to Elizabeth, and the two agreed it was inappropriate for her to be named a beneficiary. And in an email to Ed, Elizabeth said she would forfeit the 500000 But when Ed tried to reach a settlement with Elizabeth, he said she backed out of the agreement. It's gut-wrenching, it's emotionally draining, and uh, I, 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 don't, I, I would hope no one else goes through it. With no results from the diocese and a settlement off the table, Ed filed a civil lawsuit accusing Elizabeth of elder financial abuse. I didn't realize how epidemic it is. Until a judge rules on this case, we won't know if Elizabeth will be held legally responsible. We do know elder financial abuse is a big problem. We spoke to an attorney not connected to this case. Uh, statistics show that we really have an epidemic of financial exploitation occurring uh, against older adults. Carrie Peck, a Chicago attorney who's dedicated much of his career to these cases. Since 2016, the Illinois Department of Aging has confirmed more than 14,000 elder financial abuse claims. But those numbers are only part of the picture. I think it's very underreported to a great extent which is why Peck worked with the Department of Aging to strengthen laws protecting seniors, including a statute about caregivers. If a caregiver receives in excess of $20,000 in value, it's presumed to be fraudulent, and the caregiver has the burden of proof to overcome uh, and demonstrate that it's not a fraudulent transfer of assets. While Ed's case against Elizabeth will have to play out in court, He's speaking out to prevent this from happening to others. If I could do something that, that slowed this down or stopped this from happening, you know, one person, one preacher, one church, one diocese. Laura Victory, CBS 2 News. Elizabeth declined to comment on this story. The diocese released a statement this evening. We've posted it on our website, cbschicago.com.